Alison Okamura. I'm the chair of this session. And I'm pleased to introduce Professor Yu Ru Zhang from Beihang University. Uh, she's a world-renowned expert in haptic rendering and simulation, particularly for uh, the medical application that she'll be telling you about. And she's also a senior program committee member of this conference. Uh, so the format of this session will be talking for about 25 minutes or so and leaving uh, about five minutes for Q&A at the end. Thank you, Dr. Zeng. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be here to present my <coughs> uh, research work on dental simulation. Uh, I'm from Beihang University, which is one of the top research universities in China. As you may know, uh, dental surgery uh, skill needs a long-term training and practice. Um, <clears throat> for example, in the School of uh, Stomatolic at uh, Peking University, uh, students spend five years for, to complete their bachelor degrees, uh, during which two years are spent on training process, which involves preclinical training and clinical training. So if you want to be a dentist, uh, you have to spend a lot of time and money uh, so <clears throat> can we produce more dentists with less time and money? So, uh, the answer to this question is very, uh, particularly important in China because uh, we have a great uh, shortage of dentists. Uh, in most uh, industrialized countries, uh, the <coughs> dentist to population ratio is about one to 2,000, while in China, this ratio is approximately one to 8,000. Uh, the World uh, Health Organization standard uh, has a standard uh, uh, that uh, suggests the ratio of uh, one to four thousand. According to this standard, uh, the uh, shortage, uh, current shortage of dentists in China, is more than one hundred thousand. So, in my following talk, I will first address some limitations of current dental training and uh, then present our research work on dental simulator uh, and emphasize some critical uh, issues including haptic rendering and simulator validation and then uh, make some conclusions. In traditional uh, preclinical training, uh, phantom heads are used as a physical tool, a simulation tool. Uh, <coughs> They are equipped with a real surgical tool and provide students with an environment similar to that uh, uh, the actual surgery settings. However, uh, teeth models used in Phantom are plastic, which result in several limitations. For example, uh, the tooth structure uh, is very complicated. It consists of uh, different materials with different stiffness. How but in plastic teeth, it can only uh, present single material. Furthermore, uh, plastic teeth uh, cannot uh, exhibit signs of pathology. So working on plastic teeth is quite different from treating a real patient. Progressing to real patient is quite a big step. So VR-based dental simulator has been uh, developed uh, to address these problems. A typical uh, VR-based uh, dental simulator involves two uh, basic components which provide visual, haptic, and audio feedback uh, in order to create a realistic uh, environment. One of the uh, commercial product of a uh, dental simulator is Semondont, produced by the Moog company. Uh, which can allow students practice drilling skills for cavity and crown preparation. Um, as you can see here, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, this uh, physical uh, drill handle has a virtual tip. Uh, when it's touched in the virtual tooth, uh, the student will feel a force <coughs> similar to the uh, that in the physical uh, simulation. Um, VR-based dental simulator has been used in a number of dental schools around the world. Responses from early users were quite promising, which illustrate some uh, advantage over the traditional uh, uh, preclinical training method. Uh, students can 
uh, use their time more efficiently, and they can practice as many times as they want, and the mistake can be correct, uh, easily corrected uh, by stepping back in the simulator and uh, immediately repeat part of the procedure. And they can use their, uh, they can learn uh, more independently uh, without need of a teacher. Uh, rare medical situations can be simulated in the simulator for students to work on, while normally you would not, um, not allow students to practice on patient. And the student performance can be uh, measured in great detail, and for, uh, which provide possibility for objective evaluations. Uh, one of the early research work on dental simulator was done by Harvard School of Dental Medicine. Uh, since then, uh, a number of dental uh, simulator prototype and product have been developed. <coughs> uh, here's uh, some examples, and for more details, uh, you may refer to some survey papers. Uh, we began our research work on tech, uh, haptic technology more than 10 years ago, focusing on the application in dental education. Uh, we developed a dental simulator named iDental in collaboration with the School of Stomatology at Peking University. Our motivation is to explore potential uh, impact of haptic technology on dental education. Uh, we've uh, followed step-by-step -step approach to develop the dental simulator. Uh, in our first prototype, we the, uh, achieved the single hand force feedback and a rigid body contact between two, tooth and, and, and tools. A student can practice drilling and carrier's detection. And in the second prototype, we add more functions uh, which include bimanual force feedback and co location of graphic and uh, haptic display and soft tissue modeling like, uh, for example, uh, cheek, tongue, and gingiva. In our latest version of uh, Idental Simulator, we developed two basic modules. One is for uh, basic skill training, uh, such as tooth carving and uh, accurate force control. And the other is for uh, procedure training, such as tooth skilling, tooth preparation, and pocket probing. Uh, <coughs> we simulated some typical operations in uh, periodontics, endodontics, and prosthodontics. Uh, for example, in periodontics, uh, uh, one of some typical procedures is uh, calculus detection and re removal. Students uh, can learn in <coughs> using the simulator uh, to, to practice skills uh, on how, how to maintain correct posture and apply appropriate force, and how to choose the right tools and manipulate them correctly. Um, this video shows a bimanual uh, operation. For some uh, uh, calculus deeply inside the uh, oral cavity, it's very hard to get the target. Students have to practice skills how to use the, uh, the mirror and uh, tools and, and to co coordinate the motion of the two hands. And uh, we also uh, simulated carrier's detection um, You can see in this uh, video a simulated decay uh, of tooth. When you touch the decayed area, you will feel the difference in stiffness. Uh, healthy animal is harder than the uh, carrier's uh, tissue. Uh, we also simulated tooth preparation. Uh, in this simulator, a student can practice training skills, and their uh, procedure can be uh, recorded uh, for the for teacher to uh, check it, uh, where the student were having problem, which is extremely uh, valuable from the uh, educator's point of view. Uh, the dental uh, the performance of uh, VR-based dental simulator rely heavily on the haptic rendering. So. In the following, I will talk about haptic rendering and uh, highlight some challenges. Uh, the process of a haptic rendering uh, involves two uh, basic steps. The first one is collision detection, in which uh, the algorithm decides whether the tool is in contact with the tools, 
And if there's a contact, uh, how much the tool penetrates into the tools. And the second step is collision response, uh, in which the algorithm <coughs> compute interaction force between the haptic tool and the tools, and uh, determine the location of the graphic tool relative to the tools. Uh, this figure shows the haptic tool uh, loop and the graphic loop. Uh, for a realistic uh, graphic display, uh, the, uh, an upgrade rate of 30 hertz is, is sufficient. However, uh, for realist sense of touch or, and uh, stable force feedback, uh, an upgrade rate uh, should be as high as one kilohertz. Uh, such a high update rate poses a um, <coughs> great challenge in many application cases. The complexity of haptic rendering depends on the dimension of force feedback and the types of contacts. In dental simulation, there are different types of contact. For example, rigid to rigid contact between tool and the tooth, uh, and rigid soft contact between uh, tool and gingiva or tongue, and hybrid contact, which means uh, simultaneous hard and soft tissue contact. And furthermore, these contact may happen in multi-region, uh, which raise two challenging problems. Uh, one is how to model multi-region contact without penetration, and the other is how to model hybrid contact with stable force feedback. Uh, we proposed a <coughs> configuration-based optimization uh, approach. Uh, the idea, the basic idea is optimize, uh, to optimize uh, configurations of the haptic tool with accurate contact constraints. And we use sphere tree for efficient collision detection and use triangle mesh for, haptic, uh, for graphic display. The reason we use a sphere tree model is that it's easy to formulate accurate contact constraints to prevent uh, graphic penetration uh, like, okay. Uh, we, we developed a continuous collision detection method to reduce the number of intersected spheres. And we tested uh, our method using uh, several tasks. Uh, the first example is two bunny uh, interact each other. And we model the bunny uh, using 3,000 spheres. Here you can see uh, the purple uh, bunny penetrate into the static bunny, but the, the brown one stayed uh, in the uh, surface. <coughs> and during the contact, there's a <coughs> multi-region contact between the two uh, bunny. And the, the second example is more complex, uh, which simulates the contact between the Buddha and the dragon. Uh, we model uh, the Buddha and dragon using uh, 50,000 uh, spheres. As you can see here, uh, there are multi-region contacts, and uh, again, the, the purple uh, Buddha penetrated into the dragon, but the, the, brown, the brown one uh, can still stay on, uh, in, on the surface. So there's no uh, graphic artifacts. Uh, the third example is uh, the bunny uh, navigating through the pipes. Uh, in the process of navigating, there's a um, frequent switch between contact locations, uh, which result in the uh, change in the force direction. So in all these three examples, uh, we were able to achieve update rate of higher one kilohertz with stable force feedback, and there's no visible uh, penetration. <coughs> so that uh, means uh, no uh, graphic uh, artifacts. Uh, we also simulated uh, uh, soft tissue contact. For large deformation of tongue, 
we use uh, we define a sphere tree with spring and damper uh, uh, like this, and we use higher level uh, sphere tree uh, for deformation computation and lower level uh, for collision detection in order to make trade off between real time performance and uh, accuracy. To uh, simulate small deformation of gingiva, we uh, define a neighborhood of area of contact and use and <coughs> compulating, uh, compulate the deformation in this area. Here uh, in this uh, video, uh, we shown some examples of soft tissue contact. Here you can see is the force and torque generated through the uh, haptic rendering algorithm. And uh, we can achieve a high haptic rate, uh, which is above uh, 1,000 kilohertz. And we simulated a single point contact and the multi-region contact. And in both cases, uh, we were able to achieve a stable force feedback and realistic um, graphic display. Um, VR-based uh, dental simulator uh, is promising. However, the adoption of this technology uh, into the dental education uh, is a long road. Uh, the, one of the most important steps in this process is uh, simulator validation. Um, the questions in the validation, uh, question to, in the simulator validation, question to ask is, uh, is the simulator realistic? Or can the metrics of assess, assessment used in the simulator differentiate expert searching from no lights? No <coughs> Does the perf performance on the simulator correlate with the performance on the operating room? Or can the simulator predict a correlation between the present performance on the simulator and the future performance on the operating room. Uh, most of the validation study, uh, current validation study, focus on the first two questions. Uh, but the last two questions is the most challenging uh, problem in, in terms of uh, the great amount of people and time involved. Uh, we did some validation studies on our first prototype uh, 10 dentists and 19 graduate students participate in the study. Uh, they did a pocket probing exercise on our uh, identical simulator, and we used qualitative and quantitative measures in the experiment. Uh, this is the uh, qualitative uh, evaluation. Uh, it's <coughs> it shows that uh, uh, both groups were satisfied with the shape of teeth and the gingiva, but they were less satisfied with the calculus. In terms of haptic uh, fidelity, uh, the user thought the sudden force um, change uh, when the uh, calculus removal uh, occurs uh, was realistic. However, this suggests that uh, the um, magnitude of force uh, should be adjusted uh, according to the size and uh, location of the calculus. Uh, in the quantitative evaluation, we define three metrics to measure, to compare the performance of the dental group and the student group. Uh, the result shows that the standard deviation of the dentist group uh, is smaller than that of the student group, uh, which means that uh, the simulator can differentiate uh, the performance of the both uh, between the group, which was uh, quite promising. Uh, through the validation study, we identified some important factors on the fidelity of the simulator. For example, the collocation of the haptic and graphic cues, bimanual haptic feedback, and soft tissue simulation, etc. Uh, in our second uh, prototype, we uh, made improvement according to the observation in the uh, validation study. Uh, in, the, in our future work, we will <coughs> continuously improve the graphic and haptic uh, fidelity and expand the number of uh, dental procedures, especially uh, real pathological uh, changes, and integrate with course while um, add online feedback and to uh, inc 
enhance self-learning and uh, object evaluation, and most importantly, conduct in-depth long-term evaluation to further prove the uh, learning effect of the uh, VR-based simulator. So in conclusion, I'd like to address three points. First, the VR-based simulators have shown great uh, advantages and may create new opportunities for future dental education. Uh, simulator validations for effective learning is uh, among the most challenging problems in the development of advanced dental simulators. And finally, working in close relationship with dentists is critical for future innovation and success. Um, I, would like, I would like to thank uh, my collaborators, uh, Professor uh, Jin, Xiao, Jin Xiao from University of North Carolina, and my colleague, Dan Xiao Wang, and uh, Professor Liu, Professor Wang, and Ho in the School of Stomatology, Peking University. Uh, <clears throat> funding for this research is from National Science Foundation of China, National High Tech Pro R&D Program, and State Key Lab of Virtual Reality Technology and System. I would also thank my students and people who have contributed to the, the R&D and of a dental simulator. Uh, if you are interested in more details, please visit our website, and I thank you all for your uh, attention. Okay, thank you very much for that talk. We have uh, plenty of time for questions. Yes. Thank you for the great talk. Uh, I guess there are quite a lot of parameters you need to tune in order to get a realistic simulation. So I don't know, the stiffness and the uh, damping values for the different materials, for example. How do you do that? So your question is how to uh, increase the fidelity of the stiffness? Oh, it's a very challenging problem. <laughs> there are many factors and that affect the uh, fidelity of the uh, uh, stiffness. And uh, currently we are using, uh, for example, currently we are using a commercial haptic device uh, for the bimanual operation. And, um, and the, uh, the validation study has shown that uh, the stiffness uh, of the haptic de de device is not uh, as high as we uh, want. So uh, in our next step, we are going to design our customized uh, haptic device, try to improve the stiffness performance. Yeah. And yeah, from software aspect, it's still the, I mean, the real time, performance uh, should be increased, um, yeah. Okay. Other questions? Thank you. Uh, so I'm from Moog and, and we brought a dental simulator with us today and unfortunately it was kind of in the back of our booth so I don't know if, if people saw it but uh, it only has three degrees of freedom, and translational uh, in each direction. And is it right that uh, your system has six degrees of freedom in terms of it can do rotational as well? Our haptic rendering uh, <coughs> algorithm can deal with six staff uh, problem. But currently in our simulator, we, are, we were using uh, uh, commercial haptic device, which doesn't have six DOF, only have three DOF. Okay, cap thank you. Capability, yeah. Can I actually follow up on that? Because I was curious about the same question. And um, in particular, uh, it's been shown with haptic rendering stability, if you can interact with something in a position space in six degrees of freedom, but then you only have three degrees of freedom of force feedback, that the lack of torque feedback can result in some instabilities. And I was wondering if you ever encounter that with the type of interactions that you have in a dental simulator. Uh, in the test of our 6DOF haptic rendering algorithm, we were using 6DOF haptic device. Oh, okay. 
yeah, but for our uh, dental uh, <coughs> prototype, currently we don't have that kind of uh, uh, haptic device, so we are using uh, three DOF. Do, do you notice any instability that occurs from using the lower dimension do haptic feedback? Uh, sometimes, sometimes uh, there's uh, still, we, we are not 100% uh, for sure uh, for the st stable, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other questions? Hi. Uh, when I go to Tanta cleaning, actually, I become a little bit afraid because it's painful. So probably I'm not the only one. So do you have any plan for modeling like uh, behavior of the patients who may be painful? I don't know, they can move around. Can you repeat your questions? I, I didn't catch your meaning. Oh, so uh, patients will react to the uh, operation in reality. And uh, I just wonder that uh, can it be modeled in the, this kind of the haptic system? Oh, okay. In a simulator. In simulator, yes. Yeah, in the future we will try to add these functions, but currently we don't have this kind of function. Okay. Thanks. Other questions? I had one other one, which is uh, some people in the haptics community have developed event-based rendering techniques. So for example, in order to make a surface feel stiffer, you would uh, display a vibration that would indicate hard contact. And I was wondering if that's something you've tried or if you think that would be an effective technique in dental simulation. Uh, to use the haptic device to display a vibration or some kind of sudden breaking on contact, which is separate from the underlying haptic rendering algorithm. Oh, sorry, uh, like, uh, like display. Uh, yes, and that some people have tried to display uh, extra vibrations upon contact on purpose, like as an event playback to indicate hard contact. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, my colleague, uh, <laughs> can you Sure. Yeah, yeah, this is a good solution uh, to use the event-based method to add the additional vibration. Yeah, we will try that, but you know, now we use a phantom device to provide the force feedback. If you want to do this, you need another, maybe a vibro tactile motor to provide that. Yeah, I think this is a good solution, yeah. Yeah, to improve the, the stiffness feeling, to make it stiffer, yeah. Um, in your conclusion, you said um, having a close relationship with dentists are really important. Um, while developing these systems, have you faced any unexpected feedback, like you never could imagine as an engineer from dentists? Yes, uh, we have very close relationship with uh, <coughs> professors working in dental schools. Um, uh, we did the validation study uh, in collaboration with them. Yeah. I think the, the question was whether you ever got any unexpected feedback. Did they say anything surprising about your simulator? Uh, the negative, uh, you mean the negative? Uh, I guess negative feedback? or positive, right? <laughs> anything that you didn't expect to hear? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Some, some performance, they were not uh, satisfied. The, for example, the stiffness of the uh, tool. Yeah, and then the force. The force is small. Small, they, uh, they want as uh, bigger as, yeah. Great, thank you very much. Um, I think it's about time for us to wrap up this session. Let's give another round of applause to Dr. Zeng. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.